Hey guys, in this video we'll be doing a Perth property market deep dive. The best suburbs to consider investing right now in 2022, looking at the ripple effect. Okay, really important factor, ripple effect. Which are the next suburbs to increase in value? So if you're interested in the Perth property market, or you just want to learn how to find these suburbs um, that are about to go up based on the ripple effect, regardless of which part of Australia you're looking to invest, then carry on watching. My name is PK, and I help people build passive income through the Property Investment Accelerator Mentorship Program using data without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent every single time. And this channel exists to help you get ahead through three things, understanding the local and global economy, property investing, and financial happiness. Okay, so hit the subscribe button to this video, give it a thumbs up, and I hope you get a ton of value. Okay, you can see my screen right here. So this is CoreLogic data. You can find it for yourself, self, um, CoreLogic, free of cost. You don't have to pay for this stuff. All right, and what it shows is, as you can see here, the legend. This is Perth, as you can <clears throat> see here, zooming out, Perth. The legend is darkest blue is really expensive, you know, beyond 2.25 million. <clears throat> and brightest uh, red is cheapest, under 250k. So what they've done, and, you know, they've, they've done this really accurately, actually, um, is they've gone through and said, what is the median value for Perth and surrounds? Okay, and what we're going to do now is look at the ripple effect. The ripple effect is a phenomenon where it says if one suburb has risen in value is an expensive suburb, the next suburb is likely to catch up to it if it is, you know, not risen in value or hasn't risen in value as much um, or it's not as expensive. Now, there are so many caveats to this. It's not a simple formula. And I go through the formulaic uh, method um, to do this analysis and, and obviously my course. But here's some stuff that I can tell you most people aren't talking about. Um, so at least this will guide you in the right direction if, you know, you don't want to do the course if you're trying to do this for free. Um, so look, what I'll go through first is the median value relativity and then the last 12 month growth relativity. Okay, so stick with me for two parts. So the first thing here is you can see that the most expensive suburbs, I'll just get rid of this legend, is here on the seaside just west of Perth proper. Okay, and so all of a sudden we can start to see these patterns emerging where, you know, you've got this expensive suburb over here and then you've got this expensive suburb called City Beach here. Okay, this is dark, this is dark, and then you have something bright red which is less expensive called Scarborough. Okay, so according to the ripple effect, and I'm not saying Scarborough's all of a sudden going to boom, there's so many other factors to, to consider, but at a baseline at least, you could say that, you know, Scarborough would be somewhere to further deep dive in your due diligence, in your analysis. Now, we don't go through it in this sequence of analysis in the course, but I'm just trying to, you know, paint the picture for you guys and, and help you understand. So you can find other areas like this, for example, up here. So you've got this pocket up here, this, I think this is in the Joondalup Council, where you've got this suburb, um, Iluka, I think you pronounce it, which is quite expensive. And then you've got this suburb all the way down here, um, Hallery's or Hillary's, <clears throat> which is, you know, expensive. And then you've got these two or three suburbs, Ocean Reef, um, Malibu, um, etc., that are a little bit less expensive. So you can see where the value arbitrage is. You can see where the next opportunity for price growth may be because these are more expensive and these are cheaper. Okay. And, you know, people say that inner city suburbs, they're the ones who grow the most. They're the most expensive. That's just bollocks. What actually happens is that much like, um, let's say an earthquake. In an earthquake, there's an epicenter of where the, the fault lines created that friction. That's where it starts. And then it ripples out. That's exactly how capital growth occurs as well. Sometimes it starts in the capital city and then ripples out, you know, along, you know, the middle fringe and then the outer fringe of a city. Um, or sometimes it actually doesn't start in, a, in the CBD. It starts somewhere else. For example, here in the Rockingham area, um, you can see that 
This is, um, you know, a little bit, shoal water is a little bit more expensive than these areas. And then, you know, what you'll find is that these areas start to catch up with shoal water in the median price growth. I'll go through that in the second part of this video in, in more detail. Um, but CBDs don't grow or close to the city, city doesn't grow any faster than other suburbs, it just grows first, okay? So if you've already missed that growth, buy somewhere, you know, a little bit further out, middle ring, outer ring, you have to time it, if you know what I mean. It's just a, you know, so you drop a pebble into a pond, that effect goes all the way out 10 meters beyond where you drop the pebble, but it just takes some time. So you have to time it. If you've missed the growth in the CBD, or it's just too expensive or hugely negative geared, which it is, then just give it a miss. You know, normally we don't invest in CBDs here, we invest in middle ring suburbs. Those are often the best ones because they're positive cash flow, they're under 500k, and they still get the same amount of capital growth in relative terms anyway. All right, so maybe another example of where there might be price arbitrage. You can see here um, Woodvale uh, is sandwich, sandwiching this suburb alongside Hillary, so Padbury. You know, there could be some, some value there. But I think the, the really more interesting chart or, or scheme that I wanted to show you is this one. So I've just clicked a different legend. You can see in the last 12 months, the more purple or blue it is, the, the faster it has grown, more than 40% in the last 12 months. And the more red or pink you, it is, the less it's grown or the least it's grown in the last 12 months, okay? So, you know, anyone who says that Perth is a terrible place to invest, and trust me, there are people out there that are saying that or it will never grow, you know, they just haven't seen this chart. But isn't this super, super interesting? So let's just start in Perth proper. So if you've got a million bucks or two million bucks to spend, I don't recommend that, by the way. I'm all negatively geared. But you can see Subiaco, you know, obviously a very premium suburb, Shenton Park. These have already grown um, by close to 30% or beyond in the last 12 months. And so naturally, the ripple effect will say that these suburbs um, out here, like Mount Claremont, etc., uh, Perry Lakes Reserve um, and surrounding that area, those are the ones or the next cabs off the rank in terms of experiencing that growth according to the ripple effect. Now, it doesn't always occur. There are reasons why ripple effect doesn't occur, and I, and I explained that obviously in the program, but uh, here's some elementary research for you anyway. And here's another one that's really interesting, see? Um, on the coast, uh, Waterman's Bay has grown a lot and surrounds, and so has Kareen, and so naturally you'd think, all right, well, this area or this suburb and Scarborough, once again, I mentioned that at the start of the video, they're kind of sandwiched in lighter purple, they're sandwiched in areas that have grown more. So they have some catching up to do. And if we go further up north, you know, in the more affordable category, you can find these areas as well. Okay, I mean, here's some, here's an arbitrage opportunity. This pocket, this pocket has grown faster than this pocket. Okay, so you can see short-term growth is the name of the game. Anyone can hold a property for 20 years. It's all going to go up basically the same amount, regional versus capital cities. We want short-term growth because that's how we recycle or harvest um, that equity and build a portfolio. And then there are other areas as well, like you can see here, Alexander Heights. You can see this kind of corridor coming out from the ocean. This has grown the most, and you can say this has grown the most, and then this is playing catch up, and then these areas will play catch up. You know, they're really the next ones off the rank, so to speak. And, and the same sort of phenomenon, I said I'd come back to it in the Rockingham area. I can't tell you, um, you know, I can't tell you how many properties we've bought in Cooling. Look, the cat's out of the hat. Um, so to speak, you know, cooling up, sorry, we've we've probably bought like 50, 60 properties there starting early 2021, finishing up, you know, late last year, maybe early this year, really good off market, under market deals. But you can see this has grown a lot. And so naturally, there are other opportunities now beyond this area. Now, does is that to say that you should close your eyes and buy in Wellard or later? or bell divers. I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but this is not the only factor that's important. You know, there's a lot of land development, a lot of building approvals going on over here. So you can't just say that I'm going to ignore every other data factor or every other uh, analysis technique, and I'm just going to buy 
in bull divers because hey cooling up has gone up and so therefore bull divers is the next cab off the rank it's not as simple as that but this is a way to do research okay this is a way if you're looking for a free alternative this is a way to you know think about at least honing down some pockets within a city hopefully that was valuable anyone can do this but if you want me to do the same thing for let's say brisbane or adelaide leave that in the comments below type in brisbane type in adelaide and i'll focus in on where there is which suburbs have the most value arbitrage which ones are the next ones off the rank to boom based on their absolute price levels and based on their 12 month growth versus neighboring suburbs according to the ripple effect hopefully that was useful my podcast link below facebook group below more than 14,000 people in there right now and obviously links below to a whole bunch of other learning resources it's all free please 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 learn so that you know you can do this yourself it's not rocket science like this is a 10 minute video i've you know if, if you take 10 minutes to do this you'll probably you know, find your top 20 or top 30 suburbs in Perth already. It's not that hard. You don't need to go on a million forums or anything like that. However, you know, the science is then taking that list of 20 or 30, bringing it down to your top two or three or four with the backdrop of a really robust strategy in terms of portfolio strategy, positive cash flow, all that sort of stuff, borrowing capacity, increasing, all, all that sort of stuff. So um, guys, hit the subscribe button. Tell me if this was valuable. Hit the like button and I will see you next time if you comment Brisbane or Adelaide. I'll pick one of those two. Catch you later, guys. Bye.